with the grace of Christ, my brethren, we shall be reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 4, verse 1. From the Gospel of John, chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself did not baptize but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again to Galilee. But he needed to go through Samaria, so he came to a city of Samaria which is called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's will was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. And the woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink, for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it the Jew, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealing with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God, and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the world is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the world, and drank from it, from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water, springing up into everlasting life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have well said, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband. In that you spoke truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and would you say that in the Jerusalem is a place where one ought to worship? Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. And at this point his disciples came, and they marveled that he talked with a woman. Yet no one said, What do you seek, or why are you talking with her? The woman then left her water pot, went her way to the city, and said to the men, Come, see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came to him. In the meantime, his disciples urged him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat, of which you do not know. Therefore the disciples said to one another, Has anyone brought him anything to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me, and to finish his work. Do you not say, There are still four months, and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, Lift up your eyes and look at the field, for they are already white for harvest. And he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life, that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this saying is true, One sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labors. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans had come to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days, and many more believed because of his own word. Then they said to the woman, Now we believe, not because of what you said, for we ourselves have heard him, and we know that this is indeed the Christ, the Saviour of the world. Amen. Jesus Christ, my brethren, is now in Judea. 
and there the Pharisees now know that he has more disciples than John and this provoked and always provoked their jealousy and I could even say their revenge so they can attack Jesus and so Jesus now he's obliged to leave Judea and go back to Galilee why because his time hasn't come yet he must therefore Jesus to leave Judea and go to Galilee and of course there were many roads he could have taken to leave from Judea and to go to Galilee he has a choice to make for that small trip of his return and the word of God tells us that he needed to go through Sikar of course we do not know why he had to go we will learn later on but what we do know is that he had to needed to Jesus Christ man knew it and had no other ability no other choice this small decision this small decision choice if we see in the end we will see that in that city Sikar many believed in him for the word of the woman who witnessed that she said he told me all that I ever did and as I came to meet him, many more from that city believed in his name. And they said to the Samaritan woman, that sinful woman, that we believe not because of what you said, for we ourselves have heard him, and we know that this is indeed the Christ from our own experience, the Saviour of the world. And all these things, my brethren, started all this great work from that choice Jesus made to go through that small city of Sikar and out of the city there where the world of Jacob was and to sit there to send his disciples to go and get food Let's see, my brethren, how important is the guidance of God. He started, obliged, had to leave from Judea to go to Galilee. He reached, and he had to go. The word of God tells us he needed to go through Sikar. He reached the world, he sat down. Why there? He said to his disciples, go and bring food. And he stayed there in midday under the sun by himself. And there, the Samaritan woman shows up from Sikar. Now, the work of God is starting to evolve in an amazing and wonderful way, full of glory. God will be glorified because the Father is firstly glorified when we bring much fruit and our fruit to stay. God will be glorified. Jesus Christ will be glorified. And we shall take the lesson that we need to take. That we need, my brethren, always to know what we must do. What's the road which we must follow? Even if Jesus went through other roads, he could have met other people for him to preach to. But, from all those roads of his journey, in that period of time, which would only take a few hours or even days, there was a road which was perfect, and that perfect road is which has the best results. The best results, according, not so you can be a restful journey because the journey was not restful he reached there tired sweating at midday under the sun so the best result has nothing to do with how 
how prosperous we will find, find our way, but the best results are with how much glory God will be glorified in that small journey of ours. Have we understood this, my brethren, how important this is? There was another must which says, the Samaritan woman said to the Lord, Our fathers say that we worshipped on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is a place where one ought to worship. But this ought to is not from God, it's ought to from people. At least for this period, and this is very important also, there is an ought to where God says that we must worship in Jerusalem. But that ought to is not for now. We will not worship now God in Jerusalem because now it is time and Christ is saying where you will not worship anymore in Jerusalem because this is not now the tr true worshippers. The true worshippers are they who worship in spirit and truth and that's what God wants for us to worship. That's how we must worship in spirit and in truth because the time is here. A re renewal has come. But let's take things from the beginning to see how nice the will of God and the word of God evolves in our lives when we walk like Jesus with the Holy Spirit without measure and total guidance and we know very well my brethren that our Lord Jesus Christ did not do or go whatever he imagined but all night he prayed so the next day not so everything can go well for him and this is the second message today, my brethren, of the New Testament. He did not pray so everything can go well. He prayed so the will of his Father will be done in his life in that day. His desire was not for everything to go well, because they won't. They won't. His desire, desire of Jesus Christ, man, Jesus Christ, who is our prototype, He's our Lord, our God, our Saviour, our Redeemer, and our friend. His desire was, one, two, for His Father to be glorified in His life. And when He asked, He did not ask, Lord, help me so I won't be troubled. Help me so everything can be perfect. Help me so my job can go well. Help me so I can go there or here. Help me so this can happen. But his prayer was one. As he was sure they did not come here on earth to do the will, his will, but to do the will of his Father. His desire was one. Help me to do perfect what you have predestined for me. Help me, firstly, what you have predestined for me to do and for me to do it. Excellent. Amen to that, my brethren. See how serious it is and important. And he was found there at the well and the Samaritan woman shows up. He will not tell her the words of men. He will not act as other people act. He hasn't got the spirit of man. He hasn't got the mind of man or the habits of man because the, the Jews do not talk to the Samaritans. The Jews despise the Samaritans. He will not do what other people do, what other people say. But what Jesus Christ will do is the will of His Father. He talked to her. I have prepared her heart, and through her I will be glorified, His Father said to him. And because the disciples were probably an obstacle, because the disciples were men, imperfect. They haven't got the guidance of God, and that's why when they came later and saw talking with her, they were ashamed to say, but they wanted to say, why are you talking with a woman? 
because they do not know, my brethren, what God wants. That's why we must ask and seek the will of God. That's why we must pray all night. That's why it's a need for you to pray, brother, to ask from God. Our life, my brethren, is not just to come and go and to say, and if it is true that we do the will of God, the right thing is for us to know what is the will of God since we've asked for it first and help to do it perfect and rightly in our life. You cannot do this without prayer. You cannot do it without asking the Lord, seeking the Lord. Now it's a time to seek the Lord. In a while you won't need it. He will be before us. But now is the time to seek the Lord. Now is the time to know what is the will of God and to ask for it so we can know better which is good and perfect. Now is the time to ask help, power from heaven through the Holy Spirit so we can do the will of God in full. And when this woman came, sinful woman, Christ knew she was a sinner, but he did not say, I'm not talking with sinners, I'm not talking with Samaritans, because this was not the guidance and command he had from God. The commandment was to go. It was, I will give you a, send you a sinful, dirty woman, a Samaritan woman, but through her, which no man can understand, I will be glorified. Hallelujah. Through this, in which no man can understand, in your life, if you pray, God will show you what is this that He will be glorified through. And He started the conversation, give me a drink. How are you, because she had the logic of man also, how is that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? And Jesus now reveals what the Samaritan woman does not know. And we want this, my brethren, for God to reveal to us what we do not know. We want it. Amen. We do want it. We want it with all our hearts for God to reveal to us what we do not know. And our goal is His, his glory. If you knew who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked Him and He would have given you living water. Because this water in which you come and drink, you shall drink, and you'll be thirsty again and again. But the water which I will give you, you will drink, and you will not thirst again, ever. Hallelujah. That's what we want, my brethren. We want His water, which is His word, His will. That when He gives it to us to drink, we shall not thirst again. And this is what the woman wanted also. Why? Because God did not bring to His Son any woman, and God doesn't bring in our life any word, He brings His Holy Word. God did not bring any woman, He brought His woman, the woman in which He had prepared, the woman in which He had fixed her heart. To all the rest of the people, she was a sinful Samaritan woman, but to God was someone who walked in truth and sincerity. She asked for the Messiah. She wanted the truth. She could have been in sin, but she asked for the truth. She could have been in deceit, but she asked, my brethren, sincerity. That's what she was asking for. Glory be to God. And when she understood, she said, Do you know about the Messiah? Because the Jews say that we must pray in Jerusalem, but the Samaritans say we must pray on the mountain. And I'm confused. Where must I pray? Hallelujah. And my beloved brethren, when we are confused and we do not know what we must do, only Christ can give us the answer. Only to Him we can say, Lord, what do we have to do for us, for me? And the Lord said to her, another must. She brings two must, or twos. On the mountain or Jerusalem we must worship. And Jesus says to her, nor one nor the other. Glory be to God. See my brethren, how narrow-minded they are. And we think that there's no, not a third way. It can't be. It's either 
Jerusalem or on the mountain. That's how we must worship. But I do not know what is the right way. And the Lord tells us something which is much, much greater. And my brethren, when we pray to God, and you ask and seek His face, He shall be revealed to you in a much greater, greater and glorified way than you could even imagine. And when you pray and seek, and ask from God, He will do much, much more and better than you think, as it is written, than what you are counting on, know or ask, because God is the Almighty, and you are weak. Glory be to God. The disciples came. They were amazed that He, he was talking with a Samaritan woman, and people are amazed by our lives. We're going again to church. They're amazed. Again, they are amazed. And the disciples with Christ, you talk with the Samaritan woman. They were amazed. They said to him, Eat. And Jesus said, I have food to eat, which you do not know. And they were amazed. The words of Christ makes us wonder. We are amazed. But when our souls are ready to accept His word, they will bring us to blessings. I have food to eat of which you do not know. And my food is to do the will of Him who sent me and to finish His work. See, my brethren, where Christ puts His mission, the will of His Father and His work in the form of his everyday food. And there is the third message we can finish. You know how many times we eat today? At least three. And maybe more. And many times, as people grow older, I remember my mother, all she asked for, what will I eat? What will I eat? That's all she cared about. And my mother-in-law also, what shall I eat? What will I eat? That's all they care about. When we were younger, we don't, didn't care so much, we had other interests. But as the years go by, we ask, and we want only to eat. But God wants us to be interested in something else. Lord, what do you want me to do in an everyday life? Lord, what do you want me to ask from you? Our food to be the will of God and the work of Christ in which He has prepared for us. And then, my brethren, when we know what we must do, what is the will of God for us, the work of God for us, then it will be easy to say to Him, Christ help me to do it perfect. And easier it will be for God, He who blesses to bless you and to give you much fruit, to give you His glory. And it will be more easier then for God because he's very happy for this and pleased to receive you and enter richly in the kingdom of heaven. My brethren, with all assurance, I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. God wants to renew our relationship with him. He wants a new covenant with us, with each one of us separately. Or oh, whoever came to church today, God brought you here to hear this word. He gave us this word. Christ wants it. Christ wants you, my brother and sister, to bring you in the place in which He has predestined for you. He wants this. Christ wants this, my brethren. Do you want it? If you want it, he is ready to give it to you. You cannot win it. You cannot succeed on your own. But you can ask for it and it shall be given to you. Because it is exactly what God wants for each one of us. May today be a day, a new day, of new things, a starting point for each one of us in this special relationship this special relationship with the Father through Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit. A special day, a day which we will ask, as we ask, our everyday food, as people ask who grow older with such persistence their everyday food, 
and that everyday food for us to be the will of God and the work of God in our lives. Amen.